Check it out, man. We're going to touch down real quick on not so much an adventure, but I would call a struggle upstream, man, in Skid Row. Now, I was posted at the Union Rescue Mission. I was supposed to do a program there. I had already been in the rescue mission here in our city three different times. The last time I got kicked out for smoking bud, and they weren't going to allow me another opportunity to be in the program. Now, I would always either do time for a violation. Every now and then, instead of doing time, though, I would choose to ask the judge, hey, is there a program you can sentence me to, so on and so forth. A lot of individuals, they consider it uncool or whatever to do a program, but there's a lot of real ones that have done programs, try to better their lives or develop a new approach instead of just doing time, man. And I was hoping to evolve a bit, maybe maintain sobriety and discipline in a routine, but I didn't have the right concept. I didn't have the right perception of life. I felt my sobriety at that point in time only revolved around me and my own benefit. I didn't realize it tied in to the elitist and power to, into a society that is a trap by design, removing ourselves from that trap, identifying the root cause, and then forging a solution regarding it. I couldn't do any of that if I was in my addiction, but I didn't realize it at that time. My motivating factor was me. That's why they encourage sobriety in our society. Nine times out of ten is for your own personal benefit. It doesn't tie into a more fulfilling or mandatory purpose, only defeating evil. Genuine fulfillment. Purpose. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no substitute for genuine confidence. And that's what I feel individuals are lacking. And they would acquire that. They would experience that. That would manifest within them if they were to only acquire a purpose. If they were to realize that you got to stand against evil and you got to evolve continually. And it doesn't revolve around possessing things or having more satisfaction or materialism. Or it doesn't revolve around us and our personal benefit so much as it ties into the planet and stopping the planet's destruction. That's why sobriety is important. Not so you can have a few jet skis in your driveway. You see what I'm saying? At that point in time, I was unaware of the more paramount life aspects. And there wasn't that much motivational inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Leading to progress. I mean, there weren't results. I was just... That's why the success rate at all these programs is so low. And I was part of that low success rate until I developed my own program internally. You feel me? And it consists largely of purpose that I mentioned just previously right now. So, Union Rescue Mission, I was court-ordered. I was supposed to go to the Union Rescue Mission for five months, I think it was. It's a long-ass time, man, to exhibit discipline and stay out of trouble. Especially when you're surrounded by chaos and catastrophe and mayhem. <laughs> it's a terrible environment down there. You got to understand, it's not like the movies make it up to seem. It's very different, but it's still tumultuous. Let me go ahead and clarify. The movies make Skid Row seem as if... It's dangerous and there's hitters and shooters and assassins everywhere, man. And you got to be cutthroat to get through a day in Skid Row. But that's not the truth, man. Everybody's just trapped in their addiction. Everybody's hyper-focused on getting their fix. So it's dirty. There's a lot of squalor. There's, there's poor hygiene. There's food poisoning. It's just the quality of food that the missions are handing out there is low. I mean, dismal. Everything's just a lower quality of life and a more rugged and infectious environment you know there's a lot of diseases people are catching diseases like typhoid or whatever and uh yellow fever i think and crazy things you know dying of hepatitis and crazy things that used to take people out during the western times before we had this advanced medicine to some degree so skid row it's basically just dirty and rugged man it's not so much more as dangerous as it is dirty you know what i mean and the hopelessness is the most dangerous aspect of it, in my opinion, in my eyes. I got into it with some fools, uh, some fool from Maravilla named Rumble. If you're watching this, homie, I hope you are. Fool, you know what time it is, homie. Ain't got nothing but love for you, dog. But we had to do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? These individuals were chesting up on me because I was from Ventura County, and they're basically like, "What well, is LA, homie? This LA kind of like you gotta buy the beer and you gotta fund the adventure every time." And I was like, "Wait a minute, this is crossing the line into mistaking my kindness for weakness." So, long story short, I got into it with some fool, Rumble, and it was right by the Santa Monica Pier, only in broad daylight. I was grateful that I didn't get busted, you know what I'm saying? But it didn't stop there. I kept leaving the program to go drinking on the weekends, and then eventually, I ended up slamming dope because I'd get all drunk, and I'd be like, damn, I'm all drunk, I don't want to go back to the program right there. I'd be somewhere in Skid Row mobbing around, you know what I'm saying? Just getting, uh, there's a bunch of liquor stores, there's one in particular right there. The security guard, man, maybe if you're ever watching this, you see this video, hopefully, homie. There's a lot of fools I want to catch up with. I have a lot of love and respect for a lot of real ones I met in Skid Row. The environment, the structure, the design of it. Come on, man. And a lot of the individuals, we got to take responsibility for our own inability to evolve. 
or remove ourselves from a trap by design too, but it's designed to trap people. You know what I mean? And it's designed efficiently by the elitists. They cordon off certain regions. Poverty and gangs don't manifest from thin air. It, it, they extract resources, corporation owners, capitalist tycoons. They extract resources and employment opportunities from particular geographic regions. Then a lower class hood develops. Poverty, gangs develop. It's nothing manifests magically from thin air. There's a root cause to everything. So that's what I say. When you got to expect it, understand how it works and not demonize the individuals in that trap, you know, but also you got to encourage them to remove themselves from that trap. It's a balance. I mean, none of us are perfect, but once we realize that our mistakes aid the elite in maintaining their control, that's when progress needs to be made. All right. And that's what this movement's all about. I mean, that's what it's been all about. And that's what it will remain all about. I mean, reality, solution based logic, simplification. Life's not a crushing, meaningless Rubik's Cube that you can't possibly figure out. That's not life. That's an illusion by design. Life is much more simple than that. We're going to teach people how to simplify, tap into what they possess internally. So I was at the Union Rescue Mission. I was going and drinking on the weekends. I get real drunk. And then I'd be like, man, I got to slam some speed, some meth to wake up. But I hate meth, bro. And every time I'd slam it, instead of, oh, okay, I'll slam it into this meth. I won't be so drunk. I could go back to the Union Rescue Mission, play it off. Nah, fool. I'd go back. I'd be all spun out. I'd be like, man, I got to get some gotta This is horrible. My heart's racing. I feel sweaty and restless, fidgety, homie. I hate drugs in general. Are all unsustainable. They all lead to the same end result inevitably. You know what I'm saying? You'll never hear me justify one substance over another. They're all equally ignorant, bro. And they all help evil people in major positions of wealth and power maintain their control and agenda. All of them. Except for THC. All right? It doesn't result in rape and murder. It doesn't result in people losing their moral compass and inhib inhibitions. <laughs> it just doesn't result in that. Period, bro. Not one documented case of murderous predation or anything revolving around, solely revolving around THC. Okay? It is what it is. Different if somebody's drinking, taking pills, and then smoking some bud, okay? But THC in itself doesn't cause people to become murderous and diabolical <laughs> and, just, and start to, oh, what, what was that? What was that supposed to mean, homie? What are you still disrespecting? No, fool, it makes you want to eat a sandwich and get a good night of rest. Come on, man. Anyways, we're going to touch down on reality continually, and we're not going to hold back, bro. Skid Row, I was down there drinking. Slamming some meth. Go back to the program. I'd be restless. I had to get some carga. I wouldn't really have to leave the program or hit the calle to mob around to get it because, again, San Julian's behind there. You got San Pedro in the front. In San Julian, there's a bunch of fools usually saying carga. They're a bunch of brothers. And I go back there and get something real quick. But that's how it went. Went drinking on the weekends. I was doing good. A couple months. No problems at all. Drinking on the weekends. Started getting into little scuffles. Then it started to slam a little bit to wake up out of my drunken stupor. And then I'd have to get some carga to come down. And then it all went down the drain. I can blame it solely on alcohol, but I gotta take responsibility myself. I'd be a fool to say alcohol didn't play a part though, homie. Oh, you know what I mean? A lot of these people in our society, a lot of people in general, convince themselves that oh, I just have to have a stronger mind. I just have to have more self-control over this liquor or dope or whatever. For some things, there's no having self-control with, especially if you're an addictive individual. I mean, genetically, my family members have been addicts, you know, and society encourages extremes. So that's a recipe in itself for disaster, bro. It is what it is, man. Can a small percentile of individuals drink responsibly? Yeah. But out of every thousand individuals who do drink, about one of them should. The other 999, overgrown toddlers who are a detriment and a threat to the ones around them. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. The elephants in the room, no politicians or celebrities acknowledge because they're caught in that trap. They haven't evolved past it, so they can't look at it for what it really is. A destructive, unsustainable, unfulfilling, false entitlement. You know what I mean? Just like all the other substances, aside from THC. So I wanted to go ahead and clarify. And I'm talking about the substances prevalent in regards to drug use in our society. There are certain herbs like valerian root and kava kava and stuff that aren't detrimental or sinister. We're talking about the stuff that people fall victim to when it comes to the trap and addiction, okay? So I was going back to the Union Rescue Mission. They were throwing piss tests every now and then. I had a way of fooling them, of course. The reason why I initially went to the Union Rescue Mission in Skid Row is because Julio Dunn, Eli Dunn's got an all. He from, from my city in Oxnard. You know, I used to chop it up with him, coincide with him. And uh, Julio told me, he's like, yeah, 
you know, you got kicked out of this rescue mission. So, you know, when you go in for violations or whatever, they're not going to let you go back there. I already told him, yeah, man, I, I burnt that bridge, bro, you know. So I just got to rot in the cage and go through Maria's withdrawals. That was one of the motivating factors to do a program, too, instead of going to jail. Because I was always on the run or I was always strung out to some degree. And if when I hit jail, I'm going to kick. They don't give you nothing in there to help you kick unless you're from a wealthy family and you got a doctor and like medication prescribed to you, like such as Suboxone or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I've heard of people that have well-off families and they're, they're organized and their stuff's together, you know? And they do get crazy medication and stuff for their withdrawals, all kinds of stuff, and Xanax, all kinds of stuff in jail. I'd trip out, I'm like, man, but later on you reflect on it, I'm glad, bro. That would have just dragged me along further, bro. Would have kept the illusion going longer. You know what I'm saying? Reality's okay, bro. And at some point, we got to accept it, embrace it, and be okay with reality. And that way, we become reality. And nothing could come around that corner and shock you, fool. And you don't long to escape reality with a substance or whatever that causes rape and murder. Regardless of the chaos it causes, you're not still longing for that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're okay with reality. You embrace it. It's your camarada. You don't view it as your enemy anymore or something to avoid or run from. You realize that reality itself isn't detrimental homie it's not sinister bro it's never gonna betray you it's the only real reliable factor in life it doesn't have them ups and downs and character defects and emotions and jealousy and resentment and all the bs you see humans exhibiting constantly like the industrial size infants they are bro yeah no, i just i gotta keep it lighthearted, right <laughs> now anyways skid row started getting in trouble the piss tests, I was fooling them, but I remember I came back to the program and I had a big black eye from getting into it with a few fools, and it was, you can't hide that, bro, they're gonna know, like, what, I was taking a jog for some fresh air and I fell on a gardening sprinkler, you're in Skid Row, there's no gardens, there ain't no sprinklers, come on now, so I told her, yeah, I got into it, you know, this and that, I, I don't remember if they breathalyzed me or if I just admitted that I'd been drinking or whatever, but went back into the initial starting point of the program, and it's gruesome, bro. At first, you start out on the second floor, and you're with everybody else, um, a few people that are coming in initially for the program, but also everybody else that's staying off the streets on bed tickets, and they mix you all together. There was a fool when I was in that program busted with a tech. It was either a tech nine or it was a Glock with a beam on it. It might have just been a Glock with a beam on it, but it was still surprising to see the program, people strapped with gats in the program, and that thing being raided every day, and then finding a bunch of dope weapons on me, straps, like, bro, like, I never thought I'd end up in a, in a program based on sobriety where people are strapped, and it's a five-story building, and all kinds of chaos is going on, it's just too much to manage, they do the best they can, to be honest, but everything I say is factual, I mean, don't make anything up, go ahead and confirm everything, bro, you can go ahead and call the chaplains and the ministers of the Union Rescue Mission, you go ahead and clarify, bro, well, at any point in time, was there firearms found on individuals within the program, they'll probably have their way of trying to be like, well, yes, but we took care of it, but come on, man, these are facts, but it's a first-hand experience, this isn't stuff that's made up to get attention and feel cool. I see a lot of that. This is something to encourage people to avoid the chaos and to understand that instead of going through the mayhem and chaos, they can learn from the mistakes of others. So instead of you experiencing all that mayhem and life and death BS, repeatedly having to beat the odds against you and cheat death in order to make it out of one piece, you can learn from the mistakes or the life experience that others have gone through, bro. It's very simple. It's not just story adventure time, homie. It's learning, logic, appreciate, lifetime. So anyways, I was in the Union Rescue Mission. I started staying. I wasn't in the program anymore, man. And they were kind of being lenient with me. But he told me, the chaplain said, hey, you know what? After you go and turn yourself in in your county, because that's what I told him my plan was doing. My, my eyes were turning neon color, bro. I was dying out there. I slammed a dope. The food had food poisoning in it. It was a dirty-ass environment. And it was taking its toll on me physically. Now, a lot of the fools from the area were kind of, they were acclimated to the food having mold on it, past the expiration date, everything, and the dirtiness, and they don't clean their rigs much. It's just, it's a real rugged, dirty environment. And since they were native to that region, majority of them were acclimated, to, acclimated or conditioned to it to some degree. So it wasn't imminently affecting, best believe in the long run, man, they're going to get abscesses. Blood poisoning and, you know what I mean, hep C, all this BS, the liver will shut down, it'll catch up. But if you're acclimated to a region like that, it may take longer. The, the results of repercussions may be postponed. Human beings can be very rugged and our anatomy has a way of adapting. It's disturbing, bro, and sometimes it can be great. 
It can be disturbing, bro, if it ain't a positive, you know, and you're stuck in Gotham City, bro, in a delirious haze, sweating in the moonlight. There ain't no purpose to that, and that's what the elite rely upon, fool. You don't magically maintain their position. You don't magically encourage us to glorify the damaging, meaningless blood diamonds, designer clothes, Xanax, Percocet, liquor, dope. Come on, man. Gucci scarves made by child slaves and sweatshops. No, man. That doesn't magically maintain itself. They got to control and blind the masses and divide us. I mean, and encourage us to live as if life is complicated and meaningless, which it isn't. All right? So... Skid Row, bro, I started running amok. It was time to turn myself in. I didn't have to. I could have just stayed out there and ran amok, stayed on the run. And cops, they'll, they'll pass by you when you're slamming it, so they don't even trip on you, bro. You have to really be making a scene, or you have to be carrying a lot of dope or something like that and stand out like a sore thumb in order for the hurras or the cops to approach you. From what I experienced, uh, they approached me once when I was running around. I had a 40. I was drinking, and a female. Oh, God, what was her name? Uh, God. Carmen, that was her name. Because uh, I used to call her San Diego. Carmen San Diego. There was a video game like that when I was in school, from what I remember. Anyways, Carmen. Man, again, when you're drinking and you're in the fast lane, you're not grateful for your freedom or health. You don't understand that the elite encourages by design. You're going to make foolish mistakes. You're going to put yourself in horrible predicaments, bro. I was mobbing around with Carmen, who was. Pretty much a prostitute, to be honest with you, but not a street corner prostitute. Just hypersexual, getting with anybody. I didn't know. I just met her. But as I was kicking it with her, I was seeing this and hearing men hit her up and seeing the way they talk. What I was like, wait a minute, man. But I was so delirious, bro. I didn't catch on as soon as I should have, bro. I'm grateful that I did at some point before lines were crossed of any type. Trust and believe. I mean, I'm transparent, bro. I've crossed lines before. Nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? But at that point in time, I was spared on me from God knows what. Anyways, the cops rolled up on me. I was in an alleyway with Carmen, all delirious, about to do something stupid, long story short. And then the cops rolled up on me. And they're like, whoa, 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 talk to me. I had my little badge from the program. I wasn't even tripping. They see the 40 of beer. They know I'm in the program. They, but it's not like here to where drinking in public, you're going to face repercussions. Over there, again, you got to be doing a lot to be approached or held accountable. And I guess me drinking that 40 and probably busting freestyles and rapping all over. Bro, I, I had a clothing department friend in the Union Rescue Mission, so I'd be mobbing around Skid Row with DKNY uh, alligator skin loafers and shit that are made in Italy, some sports coat with chain, multiple chains, my little cell phone thing on my waist holster thing with my magnetic holster to my cell phone, you know, and flip it around, get it, it look fancy on me, put it in <laughs> I have my coat, my dress slacks, everything, bro, the whole nine yards, bro, you know, ridiculously overdressed, all fancy, all boat hated mobbing around, I'm surprised, bro, that the cops didn't pay a lot more attention to me, they were probably just like, man, this fool's delirious as hell, bro, <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I wonder what they thought, you know, but anyways, they, they asked me when they stopped me with Carmen in that alleyway, bro, <sighs> disturbing, they were like, hey, uh, yeah, well, well, what are you doing here at the program? Well, well, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm staying out of trouble to the best of my degree. All right, well, well, you're supposed to be in the program. We don't want to see you mobbing around. We're going to run your name to be sure. And then there was warrants for my arrest. Ventura County had gone and, like, had some court proceedings, and I wasn't there because I was in the program in L.A. But regardless of being in the program in L.A., here in Ventura County, they shot a warrant for my arrest because I wasn't at court. Ridiculous, bro. Could have landed me in jail on Twin Towers in L.A., bro. Could have been a whole different struggle upstream, homie, where I, I might have caught a case. You know, who knows how severe the circumstances would have become, bruh. You know, it's crazy, man. But you got to realize that the system isn't designed for equality and fairness. I mean, it's designed to maintain control and revenue. You know, misery and a loss of freedom has become a profitable enterprise. That's why you see these doctors handing out Xanax and antidepressants. And that's why you see the court system basically encouraging them to hold people regardless of it being a nonviolent offense or there being a more rehabilitative route, you know? The programs are a lot more solution-based than sitting in a cell with a bunch of violent individuals a lot of times. Unfortunately, homie, the programs only... You only qualify for a program in certain cases, you know, or certain instances. And after a while, when a judge gives you programs and you screw it off, they're going to give you time. That's why, you know, I ended up turning myself in you know, I didn't go back there and ask for another program or nothing when I was on Skid Row. Let me go in and jump back in the story, though, because I don't want to get lost and off track with ranting. So the cops asked me. They say I have warrants for my arrest. I'm with Carmen in the alleyway. 
And, and I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me, bro. I'm in a program here. How could there be warrants for my arrest if I'm in a program right here? You see the badge. You know I'm in the program. Am I doing what I should be doing? No, I'm out drinking, mobbing around. But I'm still technically in the program. So why would there be warrants being shot for my arrest as if I'm on the run somewhere? See what I'm saying? So the cops are like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. It must have been a mistake. And I'm like, yeah, just kind of go back to the program. They told me, we don't want to see you for the rest of the day. They didn't say, like, ever again out here. They were all crazy. They're like, we don't want to see you walking around here or outside for the rest of the day. Go back to the program. Kind of like, we're, you know, yeah, warrants. We're being cool. We could be dicks and throw you in a cage. But we see that you in the program. It was most likely a mistake of Ventura County. You're going to have to clear that up through the court system. Go back to the program and stop screwing things off. What did I do? I went, walked back towards the program for a bit. Waited, I think, till the cops were gone or patrol just drove it off and then just turned around and started roaming around with Carmen again. At least this what this time we were in an alley, homie, about to do something incredulously ignorant, bro. Thank God. But we were mobbing around. I was still drinking. I swear I seen the cops again. They were just like, uh, you know, like, it's just the bar's real low, so they don't expect much from you, homie. So, you know, they're not as strict out there, bro, but... Ugh. I'm lucky to still be alive, homie. Slamming all kinds of gotta out there after drinking a bunch. If the dope was really good out there, I would have overdosed. It was trash. The dope on Skid Row is trash. Not that good dope really exists because it all has the same end result. Mayhem. I'm just saying when it comes to the potency, it wasn't that potent out there. That's why I probably didn't die as delirious as I was. I wake up at certain points in time. Man, the program was really lenient in a way. You know, they wouldn't throw you out right away, but they would throw you to that second floor where you started on initially and you were mixing with all the other people. And that was the punishment, having to be there with all these delirious fools, fools talking to themselves, fidgeting, out, smoking crack, doing whatever they could get away with in the dang program with straps on them. And you're amongst all of them until you behave, you work your way back up through the program that put you back on a third floor. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's kind of a recipe for disaster, but it's the only tools our society has. I just want to go ahead and clarify. If you're thinking about going out to Skid Row, all right, for any reason, whether it's because you think the dope out there is good, you want to be able to live and barely just open your eyelids and go like this and get dope, it's not like that fool your hustle's going to fall. All right, unless you're a trust fund baby with millions rolling in or thousands given to you every month from some rich family member or something, bro, your hustle's gonna fall. You're gonna have to get your grind on, but it's like a desert, an urban desert out there. It's like Gotham City on steroids, bro. I'm surprised that Joker didn't pop up. You know what I mean? It's crazy. A lot of similar versions of the Joker. <laughs> not him. Yeah, not Heath Ledger. Anyways. <sighs> Skid Row, man. If you think about going out there and you think it's going to be fun and adventure and satisfaction and entertainment, think again, bro. Think again, homie. It's going to be exhausting. It's going to be disappointing. And then eventually it's going to be crushing. <laughs> and you're going to be lucky to be alive. Now, if you're going out there to a program, not just a slam dope, and let's just say you feel that the programs out there are your last option or resort, like I felt they were mine because I had been kicked out of this program here in Oxnard, right? <clears throat> Again, regardless of why you're going out to a program, they realize that you're surrounded by dope. You step foot out of the program, everybody's slamming dope. They're doing each other in these locking bathroom things with the sliding metal doors. Bro, I go in there on me, stepping out of the program, maybe trying to do a little something that I shouldn't be doing, drinking, and then getting too drunk and then slamming or whatever, going to the bathroom. Bro, there'd be a prostitute with some fool doing the damn thing right there, bumping up against my leg. Some other fool throwing up or slamming or whatever, or going to the bathroom even. You know, number two, bro, right here, bumping up against my other leg. So you got to, come on, man. Oh, I got to do my issue, man. Oh, God bless America. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. Don't put yourself in crazy. And that's just a little suggestion. Hit that notification button, though, and let me know what you think of the situation. You know what time it is. Reality can be powerful if you're not going to glorify the ignorance and you're going to encourage progression. Unity and evolution. Purpose. There's nothing more fulfilling. <clears throat> There's nothing more satisfying, homie, than having a point to your existence and continuously evolving past your mistakes, your addictions, and your character defects. Majority will never do it, and it's not what the elite want. They do not want you aware of what you possess internally. They want you chasing the externals, bro. 